In this tutorial, we're going to explore a very interesting plugin for Grasshopper called Parakeet, which allows us to create all sorts of interesting patterns and transform them to our 3D objects. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is go to Food for Rhino and download Parakeet plugin from this page. This plugin is completely free, and if you find it very useful, you can consider buying coffee to the creators. Here, you can check out what types of patterns you can create with Parakeet and see the types of features that are currently available. Now, let's see it in action. Okay, so here we are in Rhino and we have a couple of these columns. I created these uh, from subdees so you can see that they're all the same shape and I also have a couple of points that I wanted to share with you. So first off, let's go to Grasshopper and let's see how this plugin works. Here, if you go on the top, we have uh, the option to check all of the Parakeet submenus. We have curve, we have uh, tiling, mesh, pattern generation, primitive, and so on. The most important thing to, to remember here is that in order to create a pattern, you need to have some sort of a tiling grid. So you either have some kind of grids that they offer here, or you can create a, a regular grid uh, from uh, the grasshopper components. So let's just go to the vectors and let's choose, uh, let's say hexagonal grid. And here you can see that I have this grid. Uh, the plane we need to set up. So I'm gonna say X1 plane and I'm gonna create one point here. I'm gonna say, this is the point I want to use and I'm gonna connect these two. Now I know that my grid is gonna start from here. And when it comes to the size, let's just keep uh, size uh, as one in here we can change uh, we can change the the amount of extent in X and Y uh, direction so you can see that I have now a grid and now the way that this works is you simply go to the parakeet and you choose the pattern uh, type and here I have a lot of different types that they have uh, pre-made so in this case we can simply choose let's say this one for example and all you need to do here is uh, change the rotation factor, scale factor, and this will give you different types of values. So let's say 0.7, for example, here, let's say 0.5. I'm going to put this in the scale factor, rotation factor, and then the base polylines is what we're gonna connect here. Once you have this connected, you will see that now our, our base pattern is cre created. So it is created based on our uh, initial polylines. You can see how this pattern is created within our uh, hexagonal grid. And now I'm going to hide it for a second so you can actually see the pattern. And just like that, we created a very simple pattern. Again, if you modify this, you can see how the pattern is gonna change. So you can create many different types of patterns and you can also change here uh, the scaling. And you will see that just by changing the scaling and rotation, you can get very different uh, types of patterns and designs. So this is the first thing. This is the first thing that I want to show you to see how you can create a simple pattern. Uh, keep in mind that you can explore, you can, you can use any of these uh, genotype uh, patterns. And again, when it comes to the grid, in this case, we used hexagonal grid, but you can also use some of these grids that they have in the plugin as well. So for the next example, I'm, let's use square grid. So I'm going to go to vector and I'm going to go to the uh, square grid in here. Uh, this time let's use again X and Y plane and this time let's uh, again use the point and I'm going to in this case collect this point here. Okay, so now let's see what else we can do. So now we just have this uh, square pattern and let's say that we want to create uh, some other genotypes. So let's go to the uh, to the parakeet and let's choose for example uh, this one. Here you see that we have again uh, scale, bulge factor, degree. If you connect this guy, you will see that we're gonna have different types of patterns, but let's increase this. Let's put this to something like 20 and let's connect the X and the Y. All right, now here I wanted to show you that uh, the rotation factor here, if we again change something, if we change the factor, the bulge factor, you will see that uh, I'm going to get uh, the rotation, different types of rotation here. Also wanted to show you what if we want to have some kind of attractor. In this case, this point. What if we want uh, everything that's close to this point to have 
certain set of rotation and then everything else will have different set of uh, set of values for the rotation that's also possible and just like we would do this um, you know in a regular example when we're doing attractors we can do the same thing here I can simply uh, for example use uh, area here I can also use pull point and I'm gonna say I want to use uh, the midpoint the centroid here and I want to connect it with this point so let me just connect this point here and I will use the distance between uh, this point and this point and this distance is going to determine our uh, our values right so here we need uh, to use bounds and we need to use remap numbers and we also need to use domain track domain okay and here I'm gonna say let something like 0 0.05 and here I'm gonna use let's say 0 0.0.95 0 .95, let's say this is gonna be my start and my end domain and I'm gonna use this as a target the source is gonna be these numbers the distance numbers uh, here we need to flatten it so we have everything under control and uh, let's put the values uh, here now once we modify this once we use these mapped numbers instead of this number watch what happens so now you can see my grid and you can see how my point is located here in the middle and you can get an idea of how this will be influenced right so if i move this point uh, everything will be moving with it and uh, we can also modify uh, this uh, part here so if i lower this down you will see how the influence is gonna start to shrink and if i increase this you can see uh, the difference it's it's more noticeable so it's up to you to determine what you like uh, but for now this is this is um, the way that we would do a tractor so wherever i move this point it's gonna follow and the pattern is going to be uh, affected the same way okay so now let's do something a little bit different uh, let's uh, use this sub d and also let's use this point so i'm gonna reference this point from my rhino window and this sub d as well let's use again x and y uh plane and this uh, this time let's use some of these grids that we have available from here i'm going to use uh let's say uh this one and let's put it from from here this is our plane and we want to use uh, let's say size 0.7 something like this uh we need to extend it of course uh let's use maybe 12 in the in the x and let's say maybe 10 in the y let's make sure it's it's covering yeah it's covering okay and now we have this grid before if you remember we had the square grid now we have this type of grid i'm not even going to try to pronounce this and now for the pattern let's use for example uh, star pattern number three here and here we can actually change some of the parameters uh, if i put this to the base polylines you will see exactly that we're gonna get a lot of these star uh, shapes uh, let's modify uh, this a little bit so let's say star size something like this uh, let's modify the degree let's say we want the degree to be one at, this is actually the default and parameter b uh, we can also put uh, here star size or uh, maybe we can put something a little bit smaller something like this okay and here you can see that if we modify you know the star size uh this shape the, the whole shape is gonna gonna change as well so you can see how by just changing this size we're getting different types of uh different different types of movements very cool and again, if you change this parameter B, this is gonna play with a little bit of the offset of some of these lines. And then the, the degree is not something that you should uh, change often because it, it's not going to affect it too much, as you can see. So it's like changing the, the angles here. Uh, now, if I go to the top, you'll see that I position this uh, in the middle. So this pattern is going to be projected onto my sub D. So the way that you would do this, uh, I would simply I would simply go here I would use project and I would use my b-rep uh, actually my sub d from here and I'm gonna say okay I want you to do the uh, projection onto my object here 
And simple as that, this is how we got the pattern on onto our column. And imagine that you, you need to change this, right? So if you modify maybe some, some of this shape of the sub D, if I just enlarge this like this, you will see that the whole shape is gonna uh, change and the whole pattern is gonna follow. And just like this, we have this uh, ready now. We can simply, you know, bake the lines, do the pipe and, and so on. Okay, the next example is gonna be a little bit different. Now I want to show you some algorithms that come with this plugin that can also uh, do some some interesting um, interesting patterns. So here, let's again uh, reference our sub D. Let's take the sub D from here, and let's uh, use mesh from sub D. We need this to convert our sub D to a mesh. And now I want to show you this algorithm here that says growth on mesh. When you click here, uh, you'll be able to simply give it a mesh and it's going to create a pattern for you automatically. So uh, in order to, to visualize this, I'm going to use here uh, multi pipe and let's set uh, the radius to let's say 0 0.08. And this is going to be uh, our size. I'm going to change it here to the pattern. And now we need the, here uh, to activate a trigger. So let's use a trigger and let's uh, put the interval, let's say, uh, 20 milliseconds would be would be enough. I need now to just uh, put one button. So let's just place the button to the reset. And now once I click this, it should be able to grow on our mesh. So let me show you what this means. Before I click here on the start, let's hide this so we can actually see a little bit better what's going to happen. And now let's click here and let's click on play. And you will see how our our shape is gonna uh, grow and how this growth on mesh algorithm is going to uh, pretty much populate the shape of our mesh that we initially set. So if I preview this, you'll see how this is gonna grow onto our mesh. And based on this distance, based on this mode, you can actually modify this and you can slightly change um, the way that this would be presented. Of course, uh, same thing goes with uh, for the sub Ds if you change the sub Ds, then we would also, uh, it, it will also modify the mesh. So for example, if I uh, move this in like this, you'll see how the whole alg algorithm is gonna follow. Very cool. Okay, now once we're done with that one, I just wanted to share with you one last algorithm. It's called uh, flow path. And here again, we're going to be using uh, this sub D. So let's uh, clear the values here. Let's select uh, this, this one. And here we're gonna need uh, a mesh and we're gonna need uh, start points. So let's use these points that we already have prepared here. I'm gonna click on them. And here also let's, um, let's change a couple of options here. So uh, let's put the step to number three, iterations, let's say number seven, and let's connect the points. You'll see here that when I click here, it will somehow move all of these points on the inside. And what it does, it actually simulates uh, the path that uh, these points are gonna take uh, to get inside here. And if we if we connect here with an Arab's curve, you will see the result. You will see how these points are gonna kind of flow in, on, on the inside. And uh, by modifying this uh, slider, let me just hide this for a second. Uh, by modifying this slider, I'm going to be able to change uh, like this type of flow. Here you can see how many steps I have. You can see how connected they are to the, to the geometry. And here you will see uh, iterations. So now this is seven iterations. Uh, and now let's, if, if I decrease this, it's gonna not, it's not gonna go all the way down. So that's why we have to increase it. But if you increase it all, too much, it's gonna like kinda, it's gonna go in circles here. So make sure you have the correct uh, amount for your particular geometry. And again, if I, let's say, take all these points, if I uh, scale them in like this, you'll see that I'm gonna get different results. Again, if I rotate them, I'm gonna get different results. And this is cool because you can create some really cool, uh, you know, free flow uh, simulations. Uh, and uh, on top of this, you can use, for example, same story, you can use multi pipe from here to create those uh, those pipes and by just modifying these points on the top you'll be able to 
change the shape here. You'll be able to, of course, bake this later on and use uh, this um, as, as a result. So I wanted to share with you all of these uh, techniques that uh, are possible within Parakeet. And of course, let me know in the comments if there's any questions. In the extended version of this tutorial, we're going to cover a more advanced example where we will be using multiple tractor points, which will be the centers of our circular columns at the same time. At the end, we'll create a bigger structure based on our initial point distribution. You can watch the extended version of this tutorial on our Patreon page and get all the project files with it as well. The link is in the description. And if you're interested in seeing more information about Rhino, Grasshopper and other plugins, I would encourage you to check out our free training on the website if you haven't already. This will give you a better understanding of what this software is capable of and how to master it as soon as possible. The link is in the description. Take care. Thank you.